felt like everything was up in the air or out of your control, then do we have the let go of your planning show for you. <laughs> oh, gosh. Today we'll talk about letting go of your plans, rediscovering the flow, and getting grounded even during completely uncertain or tumultuous times. Mm. That plus we'll talk about kitties and magic pillows, the love bug and Lee Carroll, a month anniversary and checkup, finally liking scruffy face, COVID exposure, uh-oh, calm under chaos, windmill tours, production and deadlines, moves, moves, and more moves, brilliant uh-huh. classes, the power of a bomber jacket, and what in the world a lakeside vacation home has to do with anything. So welcome back <laughs> to the show, CJ. Are you ready to shine? I am ready to shine. <laughs> <laughs> That's like my, my Mr. Magoo version of it. All right. You know what I felt? Uh, the image that I had when you read through this list is we got a little box of chocolates, these high-end chocolates, and you don't yeah. really know which chocolate, like when you bite into chocolate, what it's going to be. This is what I felt like when listening to your list. I don't know. I know they're well, all going to be amazingly good. <laughs> so I pick, <laughs> I pick the dark chocolate one with a little wave on the top that says Lakeside Vacation Home. Let's start so- there. Uh, we we were looking for homes over the last few weeks um, to stay in the area in case we needed to be close to the hospital where we had the procedure that saved baby Hannah last month. And we found, and, and I was told in automatic writing by Hannah and by Miraku, who's now on the other side, that this has to be a vacation home. It has to be a place where you go, oh my God, I can't believe I live here. Mm. But to find the short-term rental with everything that we needed seemed uh, challenging um, at first, and we found something that wasn't really a vacation home, checked off all the other boxes approximately a couple weeks ago. But when I got there, I hated it. Mm. My first impression was, no, <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm like, it needs to have a plaque on it that says, you know, um, Paul Revere's house. You put the <laughs> light switch on in the inside, it seemed to get darker. <laughs> <laughs> No, this is not good for a first time baby experience. <laughs> and 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 it, it would be quiet, it would be um peaceful, but it didn't feel right. And so we hung in there and expanded our search saying it really has to be a vacation home. What's gonna be a vacation home? And then uh, one place appeared, didn't quite check off all the boxes. There was another place that I didn't think was going to work, but Jessica's going Ooh, ooh, can't wait to see it. Can't wait to see it. And so I just knew we were right, this, is this it. place no matter what. And we have now um, a stunning vacation home. Uh, no land. We had hoped for some land, yeah. but uh, um, right. no, no land at all. But it does have a dock, a hot tub two feet from the water. So you can go ice, uh, plunge into the polar, <laughs> the polar ice water, go back into nice. the hot tub, back in. Um, even has a little pool, stunning views. And so it's only through the month of June, which my heart is a little, I get to let go, CJ. Yeah. Because I would love to just be settled at this point. I admit it. I'm exhausted by all of this. It's been a beautiful, amazing time with some harrowing experiences, but I'm exhausted. And so to move, to have to move again, (laughs) I'm going, oh my and we just found out we had our one month check checkup on baby Hannah since the procedure. Her heart is mostly healed, but one valve is not yet. Mm-hmm. If that one valve is not uh, completely healed in one month's time, then we have to move again and uh, park for the last month by Philadelphia to deliver the children's hospital there. And so I, we would leave everything, I'm guessing, <coughs> at, at the home and just be renting two places at once it is a it, it, you laugh i laugh i laugh at the amount of information like yesterday i don't even know how it happened the back of a front bottom tooth i think these are like the, the teeth that should be the safest just chipped off in in, in the middle of i'm like well it feels like something's in my mouth click oh a piece of tooth what <laughs> No, and yes, there's spiritual yeah. significance to this because teeth are bone and bone is stability and groundedness. But it's like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. I have dreams yeah. like this when I grind my teeth and I wake up and my mouth is full of shards. There um, you go. But this happened to you in reality. 
thankfully not full of shards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. And, and you're talking about COVID exposure, and I want to get to what's happened with you. We are being hyper vigilant because we had two babies on board. Now we have one baby on board. And, and even a cold knocked Jessica during pregnancy a few months ago. Um, I want to be exceptionally vigilant for her. So I'm like, well, maybe the dentist can wait until we until we deliver. It's I know this isn't just for us. It's a wild time for people. I know it is. It's um, I was just sat in a spiritual sangha and everyone was saying how chaotic life feels right now. It's the yeah. it's some it's it's in the air that we breathe. I, I think that somehow Omicron, I think it's done two things, at least for my son. When I was talking to him, he's like, I feel like I'm getting it, it, I feel like a repeat of last year all over again, or was it two mm. years ago? I can't even remember two years ago. <laughs> I just don't even remember anymore. But he said, I feel trauma like, and I was like, oh, you're traumatized because mm. this Omicron has the same kind of arc and feeling because it, it just feels like, okay, all right, Delta, I get it. Like we, we're kind of like, this is the new normal and I'm getting used to it. But the Omicron has this whole new trajectory creating a whole new, there's not a new normal anymore. It's a different kind of virus. And it's. Um... Which is important for the spiritual development of the planet. I believe we were, we were heading in the right place during wake up number one. And then we got complacent. We tried to go back to our old ways and our old habits. Yeah. yeah. But this is encouraging us for something new. And because we didn't fully get. <laughs> it's like my the first NDA time. Number one. <laughs> The universe goes, oh, it's okay. I've, I've, I've got this. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I think it's like, uh, and here's what I have to report. I'm getting better. Because like, as I was reading through my notes over last year, I, I, I do automatic writing like yourself. And I was reading through my notes to kind of come in with a year in summary and my goals for this year. And when I was doing it, it was all about letting go of the unknown, being okay. I mean, these are just kind of spiritual platitudes, but... I mean, this last year has, has been all about like just not knowing, not knowing when I'm going to know. And, and it's fine to say, but it's really hard to do. But this time when I got, so we, we were um, very careful. We've been very careful. Um, we, but we met with um, our, uh, some friends that actually uh, we hadn't seen and, you know, they said they were fine. And then, we, and, and then like, Right after me met them, they took a COVID test and they were like, oh, I'm, they, they took a really steep, quick decline. Cause I guess that's what Omicron is like. You get it very suddenly. So this person who was fine during breakfast ended up being like in, in complete decline, going to get a COVID test in the afternoon, <laughs> contacting the next day. And it's like, I have COVID. I was like, oh my God, because, and we didn't know, and we were being super careful because we were visiting um, some um, people who have some lung conditions. So we're being super careful. We get our masks on the whole time outside with masks. And then finally we sit down and eat and there. And I was like, do you want to keep our mask? Then no, like, no, just take your mask off. So of course, then we find out while we're meeting with him that we've been exposed and then it's like oh my god like you're like you feel like you're a ticking bomb and you have to like run away which essentially is what we did the minute we found out we're like goodbye <laughs> like we all ran out of the door i mean not that i mean we were outside so we all ran away just in grace like in in well i was gonna say in shame <laughs> but I, I guess it was in grace as well um but yeah it's been um crazy so and then we had to kind of figure out what the right thing to do is because we have a son going back it had been like three days but not quite five days I mean it was so ever our whole plans kind of had a tumultuous change which included flight changes and like repivoting hotels so that we can like do the right thing and then um we got home and it, it was you know we found out <laughs> when we were trying to rebook our tickets that there are people who pose to be Alaska Airlines. It's not Alaska Airlines. It's an 800 number. And when we changed our tickets, there is someone who claimed that they were Alaska Airlines. We paid them $500. And when I called Alaska Airlines, I was like, I'm kind of upset that you charge us $500 for all these changes because they had initially cha pivoted our vacation in the very beginning and canceled a flight. And I said, so it seems like you guys are in the wrong. And then they're like, we only charge you 20 cents. And I was like, what? <laughs> 
<laughs> they said, yes, there's no charge. Then we found out we were scammed by um, these folks that took our money pretending to be Alaska Airlines on an 800 number, even wrote back, like, here's your flight for Alaska and travel. I mean, so wow. we got scammed for 500 bucks. I think we caught them so or, or caught the charge, and they've been um, seen to do this scam before. Um, so that started it off. <laughs> and then we got on the plane, no issues with the plane. We got off the plane. We decided to take sound transit. And then in the middle of the sound transit, they stopped the train and say, get off. You're all going on a bus. And so then we got, off, we got onto a yep. bus. We're going as slowly as you possibly can imagine on a bus stopping. And then I was like, uh, and I just thought, well, there's nothing like, my whole life has just been turned upside down for the last couple of days. And I'm just going to sit here and be with whatever is. And I was able to do that. So I know I've made some progress because I'm like, what are you going to do? <laughs> There's nothing you can do but just <laughs> sit here. And uh, yeah, so that's what it's been like the last. It's been crazy. But it's. I don't, it is... I don't think we need to finish the show. We're there. That's it in a nutshell. <laughs> So that what happened what to you? Experiencing. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, it's it's so we've we've rented this beautiful lake house. We rented it um, I think close to a week a week, week ago today. Mm -hmm. We haven't moved in. <laughs> we haven't figured out how to actually get out of one place and stop the wheel enough to move into the new place. Oh, wow! I'm hopeful we're going to do much of that later today, um, but not all pieces are in place and. And life is still life. And, you know, we spent one day beautifully at the hospital earlier today with, with checkups, which got to be done. And you just let go or laugh. And like you're saying, pause, lots and lots of pause. We've had beautiful things. Our classes are phenomenal. The way we're helping people is incredible. The show, unbelievable. And, and we're going to be doing, we've talked about format changes before. We're going to have some format changes. It's supposed to come up this coming week. Maybe it's next week. There's lots of good stuff going on. We just get to, to laugh or cry <laughs> at just how out of control. Well, it's not. I, wa I rewatched Days of Thunder. I can't seem to find any good movies lately. And I, for some reason, I watched Days of Thunder, Tom Cruise, Nicole Kidman from the 80s. Um, again this week. And one of my all-time favorite lines in movies, which was a little bit different than I heard it, but is uh, Nicole Kidman lecturing Tom Cruise about his, his uh, racing, race car driving. And she said, all of you, and she said, infantile egomaniacs, all of you infantile egomaniacs are all alike. You think you can control the uncontrollable. Hmm. But it's, I think she may have even said the definition is you can't control it. You can't control anything. Control is an illusion. Mm. Mm -hmm. yep. That's where we're at. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, so you're, the game plan, though, <laughs> despite not knowing anything. <laughs> the game plan is to finish our beautiful talk, one beautiful coaching session. And then I don't know what, drive over there with a few items, look again, come back, see if we can bring our animals <coughs> to late today, or is it tomorrow? I don't know. We have... It's fully furnished, so you don't have to buy furniture or anything like that. A crib, aside from that. It's fully furnished. Um, you know, you've got a little bit more of setup to figure out with Rue and the kitties, but it is beautifully fully furnished. Um, we get to figure out how to move out of the RV and keep the RV warm during this time because if it goes cold before we get it to storage, then the pipes would break, which Joy. means I have to keep the heat on, which means I have to keep gas on it, and then I need to find cleaners um, to uh, clear, the, just just basic house cleaners. Yeah, yeah. We got a quote a couple of days ago. It was the funniest thing. It was a quote that was more than for like a 3,000-square-foot house. And, and this thing is about 350 square feet. And so Just for like, the van? What? Oh, my gosh. I'm like, huh, what? And so I get to look for a beautiful cleaner later today. Um, and then I have to, so I have to get cleaners in order. 
I have to get the vehicle, all the water dumped out of it, so a dumping service uh, uh, involved. I have to figure out which day we can bring it up there. I have to get gas later today to make sure it's still filled. Then I have to figure out how to bring the three kitties and uh, Ruse easier at the same time over there. I did buy um, giant leather gloves that go from the tip of your fingertips up to your uh, <laughs> armpit. <laughs> To see if that will help with with one of the kitties who, uh, <laughs> and I have a steel crate which is not for cats, it's for dogs. But I figure I'm going to turn it on its side. It has a big opening and drop him in it. <laughs> oh my god! Wait, the cat just really doesn't want to go out of the RV. It's it's uh, to get him to go anywhere. So, which was one of our concerns in Colorado. If there was a fire, which we did have, yeah. and it came racing over the hill. Could we get him out in time? Other cats, yet yeah, him, could we get him out? Uh, is this the so, same kitty that needs a magic pillow? Is this love uh, No, that's that's uh, two of the three pitties, kitties. Jessica just got a, um, a C-shaped pillow for sleeping, quite pregnant. She's right. much bigger than her five months because it was twins. Yeah. Uh, and so she looks, at least to me, and I'm no expert, eight or nine months. She's huge. And she's I'm five sure. months, but she's eight. She she's, looks like she's oh, poor yeah. thing. That is the worst. So it's so know, hard to walk. It's hard. Oh. Roll over is a giant effort. So like we got the green poor light thing. this week that she can exercise again, like she was exercising before this situation. And and we're like, uh, yeah. <laughs> she's like, well, maybe I can walk a little bit. <laughs> I was on a spin bike and people would like come, they would like, I'm on a spin bike doing my regular spin class. And I remember people would come around, you know, cause your back doesn't look that different. And then they'd come into the front and be like, Oh, like horrified. Cause it's, it's gigantic stuff all the way into eight months. So you can bike. I know you can bike. So won't even give it a try. <laughs> um, I, but uh, so she has that C-shaped pillow, but every time she gets out of the pillow, the kitties love it and they take over it. <laughs> she has to find a way because she can't lift the kitties after this procedure. She's not allowed to lift oh, God. anything. Oh, my gosh. Oh, the, my the gosh. Fun of this. And then the love bug, she is not into interviews. But yesterday I had an interview with uh, Lee Carroll um, and Mark, Monica Mariani uh, on um, Cryon. And the love bug came and was butting heads and in front of the camera for about half an hour before turning to Lee and Monica and just stared <laughs> at the rest of the interview. At 2,000 plus shows, never been on camera. And she's just staring. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. She's a Chiron kitty. Yeah, apparently. That's love hilarious. So, and then earlier this week, the, the RV has been so cold, I, I dragged out my bomber jacket that uh, Jessica had gifted me last year. Uh, wasn't sure, will I wear this thing, will I not? And I don't have it on right now because, again, universe, everything's in, in moving mode. And I'm like, do I want to take off the sweatshirt right now to put on the jacket? And I'm like, no. <laughs> but I'm, I'm loving this scruffy, roughy kind of. I love it. Look, and so the leather bomber jacket with the fake sheepskin around the neck with the scruffy neck and or face, it's it's working for it's me. It's the CJ. updated Tom it's, Cruise. <laughs> it's finally working. Yes. <laughs> I think it I would like the whole look. I like the whole look. So I'm I'm thrilled because it just feels it all makes sense now. It all makes sense to me. It feels right. So I'm I'm loving the look. Okay, so tell me about um the month checkup because I want to find out because I, 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 the last time we spoke, um, so you said that there's still this little valve that, but is everything else good and okay? And is Jessica so, feeling okay? Let's go to the, the, the end result. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, even if something is necessary, baby Hannah is expected to have a magical life, a full recovery, no problems or challenges at all. Okay, good. As it stands right now, we made it at the last second, at the last second, to the last second of having a procedure that saved Hannah's life because her heart was starting to fail. Wow. Three, three valves weren't working properly. Mm. Her heart had radically thickened up, and she was trying to pump for uh, baby Miraku, who couldn't pump on her own. Mm. So we, we saved baby Hannah's life. Two of her three valves went back to normal mm. like that. The third one hasn't yet. 
and whether it will or whether we need a procedure, we don't know. And so they're going to make a little bit more of a determination in a month time if it hasn't returned to normal. So everybody watching this, please play for, pray for baby Hana and her right ventricle valve, right ventricular valve to be beautiful swinging doors working like normal. Yeah. And that's that's the hope and dream and goal. It has been hard. I did a bunch of clearing work this morning. It is hard. Um, I think this was, and I'll speak quietly because Jessica's in the other room and I love her so much. I think this was harder in a sense than last month because there's no clarity now. And without clarity, everything just feels so up in the air. Is my baby going to be all right? What's the next step? When do we find out? What are we going to do? Mm. And and then that overwashes back to what was the biggest ch- uh, decision that we had to make in our lives last month mm. to save baby Hannah, which was the only decision that could have been made mm-hmm. because her heart wouldn't have made it. Mm. Wow. So um, she's doing relatively great, but today is literally the one month anniversary. Oh, it's hard. Yeah. This is a hard day. Oh, no, I'm sorry. So um, we'll be great. We'll be fine. She's handled it well. Um, we'll do more healing work. We'll call in who we can and, and, um, whatever it is, is whatever it is. The, the planner in me wants to go figure out the, the, uh, potential move for the last month down to Philly. Um, but we've had a uh, guest on the show who've said, well, that, that is, um, circumventing the universe's ability to provide you miracles, leave it alone for now. And so I'm trying to. <laughs> so, so this is because provider. because I, I mean, yeah. you have because if the baby comes early or you have to if you're looking at the heart, there's actually an issue and you need to operate the and and have the baby be delivered earlier than you're in in range to the Philadelphia hospitals. Is that why? Slightly different. <clears throat> we weren't supposed to have to deliver in Philly. That's the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. Oh. Only if it is a very high risk. A delivery possibility. Okay. So if her heart is still in this condition, then you can't tell until she's born. Is it really? Is it bad? Is it not bad? You can't really tell. And so they'd want to deliver in Philadelphia, Just which to be means safe. they'd want to park you there in advance. Now they changed the due date on us. Kind of dropped the bomb on us. Yeah. What's the um, due date? The due date was May 28th. Mm-hmm. They said with this procedure that's been done, uh, expect her to come about three weeks early. So wow, the due so date just moved up to May 7th. Wow, so, okay. Which which is a positive. <clears throat> if she came early, then we have more time in the lake house before we need to find our next place. Oh, I see. So you're going to stay in the lake house until kind of closer to May 7th, and then you need a place to hang out around okay. like two or three weeks before May 7th just in case something happens. I, I'm guessing maybe even, <clears throat> yeah, maybe two weeks, hopefully even closer to May um, that we get to hang out down there and figure out uh, kitties and rooster again in a place close within, let's say, 30 minutes of the hospital. Um, and then afterwards, we can come back to the lake house. Wow. If, if that scenario comes true, and I'm, I don't want to put energy in there, I, I, as the person who I want to have this whole thing planned and mapped out, uh, I know you're that kind of person too. I want to know all the logistics and all the details. I'm not allowed to yet. Oh, interesting. I, so when you're doing the channel automatic writing, it's like, just wait and let us like figure stuff out before you so, move forward. Is that, it's automatic I, writing? I, no, that just, <clears throat> just a gut instinct of Jessica is I don't want to put too much energy in that direction yet. Okay. Got it. So, so let's wait. Now, all I'm getting from automatic writing, um, and I haven't asked specifically about, uh, uh, Surgery. I have I have an uh, an intuitive hit, but I'm I'm leaving it alone. Um, is um, everything will be fine? Baby Han has spoken with me significantly. She's like, we're going to be running, we're going to be playing, we're going to be climbing mountains, we're going to be doing this, we're going to be doing that. She's still showing up on ultrasound as the most active baby they've ever seen. <laughs> of course, <laughs> she is your baby. <laughs> She's Check like sitting there doing push-ups, like, you know, running around. The, the, local, <clears throat> the, the local perinatal spe- specialist last week had wrist fatigue by the end of the ultrasound session. She said from chasing <laughs> Bibiana around. 
and and the the cardiologist two days ago it took or the the, the one who did the sonographer sonography for the cardiologist um it took twice as long because she couldn't get Viviana to stop Wow. Moving. That must exhaust Jessica, too, because I know when, the, when my son, Caden, um, when I would be spinning in the bicycle, he, would, he, he was fine when I was moving around. But when I was still, he'd be just kicking. Like, it'd just be like, just like a drum on the other side wow. of my body, like, the entire time. And it's somewhat exhausting because, like, you have someone kicking inside of you. <laughs> That's funny. She, she's got the kicking, not that much yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's because her, she, she, she not yet, but she she will. So that'll be interesting. And be like, oh, you're on the spin bike right now. Yes, and then the and then I actually had my younger son or oldest son was actually face the other direction. So he was actually pushing against my spine <laughs> with his little feet. It was like it was the most painful pregnancy ever. Like went birth rather. So hopefully she doesn't have that. Um, I so I want to share with you this idea that I got from the this class that I took, I took this class and first of all, there was extraordinary. There was this woman who is, has cancer and is about to be operated, do her first round of chemo on Monday. And she was just saying how she really wanted to get clear with her genius. This is this class I was taking um, before. And she's like, I don't even know if I'm going to live another year but I still want to get clear with my genius nonetheless, and I'm taking this class. So I just thought that one that was extraordinary. So this is a, a small group experience. So I'm like, wow, this, this woman's extraordinary. And the second woman was this artist who was um, maybe 23. She's a young girl and um, woman. And what's so amazing is the younger folks that I've seen in these spiritual practices, they are just like, I don't even know who these geniuses are, but they're incredible. It makes me so hopeful about the future. But she's a graphic artist. Um, maybe she's maybe 26, so she must be out of school for a while. She's a graphic art, trained graphic artist, and she was doing all this work. And she's moved from artistic expression from doing graphic art um, to doing her own drawing and painting and, and those kinds of things. And it was so just beautiful where she said, you know, I'm not, I'm creating this art and I don't know whether anyone will find beauty in it. And she just started crying and I thought, oh gosh, all of us feel that way with all of our creations. You know, we're creating things and we want to create things of beauty, but we just don't, you know, sometimes they're, it's not recognized initially or ever maybe, you know, and, and it's just mm, being in that place of knowing that it's beautiful, even though other people don't see it right away or maybe never see it. <clears throat> so she was talking about that and uh, she was talking about something that I, that is actually really relevant to me and perhaps relevant to you, given what you just told me your afternoon looks like. Um, my last couple of months have been being in production mode, hitting deadlines and just like, you know, massively getting stuff done. I don't think, like I said, I don't think I've ever worked so hard in, in probably the last 20 years than I have yeah. over the last six months. And, um, and I was asking her a question. I said, so how do you know when you're producing things from spirit versus when, or how do you know when you're creating, you're in the creative process, if you're doing something through spirit or you're doing something through um, not, or ego? And she said, I know because I think I'm actually in production mode versus creation mode. So she said, even when I think like I need to get this checklist, that's production mode. And she said, when I think of the word deadline, if I'm on a production mode, then I'm on a deadline. And literally after I finish that production, I feel like I've hit a line and I'm dead. You know, like I just pass out, I'm done. Yeah. That's how I know I'm creating through ego. Um, versus when I'm in creation mode, there is no deadline. There's just a birth date, a I birth like day in which something is birthed. And so um, based on what you just said, I know that at least helped me immensely just hearing that. I'm like, oh, that's like a mindset of am I co-creating with the universe and, and it's going to birth on the day yes. that it's going to birth regardless. And it's so mirrored to your birth itself. Like, how can I be in that place of thinking that this is the birthday? And the birthday, just like Hannah, will come at when Hannah wants to come. It has mm -hmm. no, you have no say in this whole mm -hmm. thing, right? So how can you see 
what you're doing in the afternoon as a birthday or the new beginning of your new lake house and your new journey into this lake house. It's like, it's just a, it's a really subtle thing. You can still get all your stuff done and get it done, but doing it from a place of co-creation and a birthday versus, yeah, a deadline. I just love that you said that. I feel like going to the lake house this afternoon and just talking with the lake house. And yeah. Saying, how, how does this happen? How, how do we do this? And having the time. Uh, my my sister is a, a brilliant uh, musician, songwriter, producer, and had, um, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to call it the coup of the century this week for her, had just an, a, meeting, a meeting that is going to take her to the stars and beyond with her music. Nice. And it had a, four, she sent me a, I read about it, which is awesome. And then she sent me a four minute video to watch and respond to her. And I'm literally going, where do I fit the four <laughs> minutes? Oh my God. And I'm going, okay, if you can't find four minutes for a loved one, we need to find a way to shift. <laughs> and oh. we've all been there. So it's, it will work out magically. I have so little control over it. I will say this, the lake house, whether it be for short, for long, um, is a game changer. Um, having spent last year in the desert and, and I'm sure I talked to you about it then I said, we will boomerang to water. Um, we are going to get, whether we're going to buy after this, things are coming up so fast. I don't know whether we will buy after this or rent long-term after this, but we will go lake again. Yeah. Um, and we will allow the water <laughs> to help us to heal and play on the water and be by the water and be in the water. Yeah. I love it. I have, I had one other thought intuitively. Have you ever thought of Wyoming? Uh, well, I- yes and no. We used to think of Wyoming. Okay. Um, but, and, um, I think it was, uh, uh, why is her name escaping me? It was there and then it was gone. Um, the, the happy person. medium. Yeah. Uh, her name is, oh my gosh. And we just, we, we had her on, <laughs> please forgive me. I guess it's where I'm at today. And I know some people, so many people will write in saying it's da, 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 da. But um, she was suggesting Montana. It's the smoke, the the fires and Wyoming. So we had fire come to our door. door Yeah, can't do that again. Close the second time. And then this fire, this Marshall fire in Boulder uh, started a quarter mile from where we lived as well when we lived in Boulder. So we are. I get it. I want it. I am a Western boy. I am the Rocky Mountains. That is me. Not that we, not that we, uh, we can be anything, but we are our land. And my land is the Rockies. Mm. And let go, dear one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have a full afternoon planned for you. It's I'm I'm so glad to hear that, baby Hannah, and I will be praying for her. Woo-hoo. I'm no so matter what, hundred percent. So yeah. You know, whether it's one way or the other, ain't in our control. Exactly. I think it. we've learned that it's Thank a birthday. And I found tremendous peace after we got the news of where things are at. I found tremendous peace in the letting go. Mm-hmm. In the, all right, it's going to work out. I don't have a clue how. I could be totally stressed out about that, but I'm just going to laugh and let go going, out of my control. I get it. Really out of my control. Thank you. You yeah. got this. I don't got this. You take this. I think we're just going to keep on getting hammered until we get it. And it's like, okay, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Please stop. <laughs> the beatings will continue <laughs> until morale improves. Exactly. I'm beginning to get it. I, I feel like after we, I was sitting on that bus and I was like, really? <laughs> It's taking like whatever, an hour and a half, twice the amount of time to get home. Like, all right, I'm getting this. I have no control. I'm just going to enjoy looking out the window and meditate and listen to some like really interesting MP3. (laughs) Anyways, well, good luck with all of your stuff today, Michael, and birthing your your new place of your new home, your new vacation home. 
And when we speak next time, it it will, um, God willing, angels willing, <laughs> we will be, we will have a truly stunning backdrop. And as soon as I say that, a list pulls up, but you need to get this, you need to get that. And I'm like, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let the production mode go and let this be in a co-creative space. We're creating your new home. Lots of love, CJ. Yes, Thank lots so of much. love. For everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler and CJ Lou from the Fired Up with CJ show. And I can hear Slash or Switch in the background as well <laughs> saying, <laughs> be well, have fun. Just what else can we do but completely and totally let go at this time? <laughs> and above and beyond all else, shine bright. Woohoo! <laughs>